Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a ship that I have had for absolute ages and um, well I just never got around to reviewing her. Actually I haven't played this ship in a very very long time until recently. This is the Nagato, the tier 7 Japanese tech tree battleship. Now the Nagato was the last uh, dreadnought that was built before in Japan before the uh, before the treaties came into force and everything else just, just didn't really happen anymore. So this is from a design really a World War Two ship, uh, a World War One ship still, although she wasn't quite completed by the end of the First World War. This was the first Japanese ship that had the all or nothing sort of armor that was similar to what the US Navy was building at the time. And she was the first war uh, the first battleship in the world that had uh, guns that were larger than 400 millimeter or 16 inch. Uh, she has 410 millimeter guns, even though the Colorado was, I think, uh, they, I think they started first, the Nagato was finished first or something like that. But I think she was by just by a, a small margin was the the first one to have these big guns. Uh, she she was she was vastly renovated around about in the 1930s, mid 1930s, where they actually replaced the main guns, which is something that I haven't really heard anywhere else on on a battleship. It's not something you'd, you'd usually do, but uh, they had they had guns around with uh, thicker turret armor from from the planned successors of the Nagato, which had been scrapped because of the naval treaties. so But they still had the gun, they had already had the gun turrets around, so they eventually uh, slotted these into the Nagato, giving them a better elevation. They've also done some work on the secondaries. They have they replaced the uh, the mast with, uh, with the typical Japanese pagoda-style superstructure. And uh, they upgraded the AA quite a bit. They removed the torpedo tubes that she had initially, uh, took away two of the 140 millimeter secondaries and replaced everything with a lot more AA uh, than that they could fit onto these things. She was actually the flagship of the Japanese and uh, Yamamoto himself was sailing on her when it, uh, during the attack on uh, Pearl Harbor, although the Nagato herself didn't really get involved in any of these things. So, um, what 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 do we what do we have here in game? Well, first of all, if we look at um, if we look at at the speed, uh, that's quite surprising because the original Nagato was I think doing about twenty seven knots, which scared the bejesus out of the Americans because the Colorados and things uh, as her contemporaries were only doing twenty one, and everybody got a little bit concerned about the fact that Nagato and Congo and all these things were just so much quicker. Uh, but she only does 25 knots here, and that is, and if we're looking at the secondaries, we see that she gets 18 secondaries. That is because this is the refit. This is not the original Nagato. This is the interwar refit, where they fitted, uh, well, the heavier turrets. They fitted additional armor plating and additional anti-aircraft guns, and due to the higher, dis uh, higher displacement, she actually ended up... Um, slowing down to around about 25 knots. So this is curiously accurate. And yeah, going up from going up from the Fuso's 356 millimeter, we are actually seeing the 410 millimeter main guns here. Although we only get eight of them, and I think the bicycle reload is somewhere around 20 seconds, uh, 21 seconds, so not as fast as the Germans. But uh, these are hitting reasonably hard, and uh, th they are actually quite nice guns. They're doing a lot of damage with 1800 alpha damage on the armor piercing, and the high explosive isn't completely bad either. The secondaries are fun. I mean, these are casemate secondaries, which was, I mean, that's what she was originally constructed with. But uh, these these 140 millimeter secondaries actually have a very good range and um, a reasonably quick reload, at least in, in my setup. The AA is concentrated mostly around the small caliber AA. Uh, I think she's she received, down the road, she received 127 millimeter uh, AA guns like four of them or something, somewhere around the center line. I don't know if this was already implemented here in this uh, in this one, in this edition here, but she definitely received a whole bunch of the rather dreadful 25mm Type 96 anti-aircraft guns, and that's probably what accounts for the small caliber AA. So short range AA, uh, not a great AA ship, but can shoot the occasional plane down. Uh, in terms of armor, 
um, you'd be surprised actually. So, I mean, she's not a German ship by any means whatsoever. But the belt armor on the Nagato was actually at the thickest part somewhere around 305 millimeters, which isn't that far off from the Colorado's 340. So, and the deck armor with I think a total of 150 millimeter wasn't par wasn't bad either. So this is a surprisingly sturdy ship. Now the Amagi, I think, at tier eight is where it be, where where it, it changes a little bit again. But um, this is not a and this is not an extremely squishy ship for a for a tier seven battleship. So you can uh, you you can play this. I find a little bit more aggressive than you would in something that is very very very, very vulnerable. Uh, and the guns are also not hyper precise. No, she does get the precise aiming, but it's only a preci precise aim one, which increases the the accuracy, which probably means this de decreases the uh, the ellipsoid for for the, or the sigma for the ellipsoid of where the shells are going to be landing by twenty five percent. But you know, it's still there. And Japanese ships in general seem to be meant more for long range. I personally find that this ship does pretty well at close range. And this is probably not something I'm going to be able to keep up, but in the absence of a precise aiming module in slot one, I have actually ended up... Uh, initially, I've played with the main battery mod two, and this is, this is perfectly viable because the turrets are very, very heavily armored. You don't lose them extremely easily, even with this module in, and you get the reload down to 19 point odd seconds, which is pretty good. But I found that I enjoy more. What I enjoy more is getting the secondary reload down, and then um, playing with. I am playing with deck protection mod. You could use the propulsion as is kind of more of the canonical build for battleships. But I personally prefer the deck protection mod for things that don't have the greatest amount of uh, fire prevention because you do get set on fire relatively frequently. Otherwise, this is tier seven. You're starting to see a lot of the really really nasty AG spammers. Um, and you want steering in slot three probably because also really there's not all that much else that you can have with, that you could do with these things. The torpedo damage reduction, by the way, um, this is something to be aware of for the Japanese ships. They have very very good torpedo damage reduction, and the Nagato historically did receive additional torpedo bulges and uh, rather elaborate systems of uh, cavities at the side of the ship that were d either d carrying oil or and or designed to take the impact out of torpedo explosions and prevent them getting through to more vital parts in the inside. So if you get hit by a torpedo, it'll take about a fifth, almost a fifth of the uh, of the damage off. So down the road, this can become also an interesting uh, an interesting factor. Now, the one reason I have been starting to play the <laughs> the, the Nagato again is because I actually have Isoroku Yamamoto. <laughs> And I think I got him again ages ago with out of the Ashitaka bundle. But I figured, you know what? Um, I've been playing American top tier ships recently for testing. <laughs> and uh, I, I get owned by Yamatos pretty often. So uh, I want to ultimately get uh, Yamamoto uh, fully upgraded and have him sailing on the Yamato. Because he's got some really, really nice skills coming up there. Um, beginning with the sixth sense skill, which is actually quite, quite useful. All right. Um, what else do we need to look at? The uh, let's, let's let's look at the elite bonus first. You can get a little bit more hit points, uh, a little bit better AA damage, and a little bit more torpedo damage reduction, which is a good thing. Uh, this is not a bad bonus at all to take. Personally, I prefer this one because it gives us a bit more uh, main battery reload. It gives us a bit faster traverse on the main batteries because these four hundred tens. They do get the regular five degrees per second battleship, which isn't super fast. So having a little bit there without needing to uh, to waste a module on it is is a good thing to do as well. The camouflage, um, if you get for the historical one, it's the usual stuff: better dispersion, better range, um, more hit points, and more torpedo damage reduction once again. But uh, as usual, we're just gonna we're just gonna be sailing with the regular old free. Slash, yeah, mostly free. I've got 54 million silver. It's free, <laughs> at least for me. Um, camo uh, camouflage. All right, uh, the Nagato. Let's get into some games. In the first battle, we are bottom tier. It's a tier eight game, and we're playing Domination on New Dawn against Lexington, Colorado, Gneisenau, Cleveland, Brooklyn, Terrible, and Mayhem. A lot of HE shenanigans coming in here. 
where, uh, which is not something we're particularly well suited to deal with. But we've got two destroyers with us and there's a carrier in play. So, um, like I said, I, I, I personally like to play the Nagato a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive than you would normally do, I guess. So with, with two cruisers and two destroyers in the enemy team, I am not super afraid of destroyers because of the excellent HE on the main guns and because of the um, surprisingly rapid firing long range secondaries on this thing. So um, this, this can come as a bit of a nasty surprise and I haven't even managed to get to the uh, auxiliary armament skill yet, although I probably wouldn't be taking it with Yamamoto because he has the advanced uh, module damage skill. So. Uh, this is not, uh, like, precise secondaries is probably not something you're going to be getting on Yamamoto. But yeah, Kagro and Skorna are, uh, are, are scouting, and there's the Brooklyn. And uh, he's giving me a nice flat broadside, so precise aim up and shots out. And you see the dispersion can be a little bit questionable. There's the Mahan, Mahan, I don't know. But uh, we've done a nice, chunked a nice 6,000 damage out of the Brooklyn. And now we just need to dodge those torps and get our... Um, get our secondaries to work here while we're reloading. Now with two destroyers I don't think he's gonna have a great amount of time to, to torp me but I'm slowing down anyway and uh, just uh, just waiting for the for the guns to turn around in their casemates. They are not turning particularly fast but um, they are at close ranges at least doing a doing a really nice amount of damage and they reload very quickly with the, <laughs> with the changes that I've made there such that uh, every se six seconds I get to fire them but he's dead and um, that leaves a battleship that is trying very very hard to find the, the next map so I'm just going to ignore that one and head over there and see if we can deal with the Brooklyn because a um, he is more of a danger to my destroyers. B, he's giving me a nice flat broadside. And C, I want to be in, make sure we're not losing the B cup. I've got two people targeting me. That's probably the battleship and the Brooklyn. So just turning ever so slightly to dodge the shots. There they come from the battleship and they've all missed. Uh, yeah, if you should try to shoot me from that range, good luck with it. Now we're just waiting to get the guns turned around and then we'll blap the Brooklyn again. I'm not sure why he's giving me broadside though. Uh, I mean, there's no reason for him to. It's not that uh, he's got anything shooting at him from the other side. So uh, why he's not ca why he's not kiting away through through B and linking up with the Cleveland is anybody's guess. But uh, as soon as he comes back comes out back between that island, um, I'm just going to delete him. Um, and then I'm going to try, but nah, I can't lob this. Okay, there's some airdrop torpedoes. The New Orleans gives me some A cover, which is very very much appreciated. We still have a Cleveland as well. And the Colorado, or it's the Colorado back there, has managed to kill the Kagro. Not sure how, <laughs> but um, there's the Lexington. So let's destruct the Lexi, uh, delete the Brooklyn, and then... Um, okay, that's Brooklyn gone. And then we're going to... I mean, we're holding two of the caps. Cleveland is not endangering our carrier right now. So uh, I'm... And I've got, I've got an American cruiser with me. So we do have some AA going on here, so let's keep pushing. And um, just make sure that the Lexington leaves our, our destroyers alone, uh, such that whatever is... What's it? The Skorna? I'm not sure why he's in a point-blank battle with the Colorado, but um, I mean, both of these should have been able to stealth drop the Colorado without any problems whatsoever. And we're going to try and dodge some torpedo planes from the Lexi, but um, uh, we might, have, might be taking one or two or so here. Uh, uh, yeah, one, two. <laughs> That's fine. No flood. I would have had a Damacon ready. Now, the reason I'm I'm not super afraid of um, actually going a little bit a little bit out of ways here. I'm going a little bit away from the capture circle. So one reason is because I am keeping the Lexington busy. Uh, the our heavy cruiser is engaging the Cleveland over there in around B Cup, and I actually have angles at the Cleveland if I need to. Like I'm not that far away, right? Um, if if I can. Uh, if I have to, tur to turn around, I still have range to hit the Cleveland around in B cup. But I think the Cleveland is dead. Well done. Uh, so it's not now just up to me to clean up that Lexington here. And then uh, help out with... Uh, there's one destroyer and one battleship left. Uh, it's the Terrible, I think. And the Gneiser now, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, that should be... No, it's not the end of the Lexington. The Dispersion. <laughs> it can be a bit trollish. So once again, put her in reverse to dodge the torpedo bombers as much as possible. And um, we are, now that should be the end. Yeah, that is the end of the Lexington. We're taking three torps. But uh, torpedo protection on Japanese battleships is excellent. And I think this game is won. I mean, 
Uh, they have killed our Lexington. I don't know who it was. I haven't been paying attention. Okay, I thought West Virginia is going to go down, but we're so far ahead in points. And I've still got two heals that um, they're going to be uh, they're going to be hard pressed to win this one. Okay, let's see if I can get shots lobbed at the Gneisenau from over here. Okay, Gneisenau takes out the West Virginia and is obviously capping. And there is the Destroyer. I mean, they would have to kill us all. And there's one, uh, I think we still have the Scorner left around A cap. So um, he can just run if he needs to. So I think it's all good. Anyway, we're going to go and brawl Gneisenau. Now, the Gneisenau is at about as much health as I am. And the Gneisenau obviously has torpedoes and pretty nasty secondaries. But so do I. <laughs> I mean, not torpedoes, but I do have pretty nasty secondaries. And uh, once again, this can come to a bit of a surprise. Plus, the Gneisenau is busy trying to kill our cruiser over there. So we do have a little bit of an advantage of an early start and get two salvos into that thing from you. And from this range, the 410s are uh, doing a reasonable amount of damage. I mean, it's a German battleship. They're not easy to citadel, but um, I think starting with the Gneisenau. Now, I am slowing down here because I am assuming that the Gneisenau is going to get his torpedoes away. But I haven't seen anything, so I'm getting ready to switch over to the HE. Yeah, there come the Gneisenau torps. And um, I think I'm going to take one. That's okay. There come some Terrible torps, but they have, they have, I believe, missed. So I'm just going to outheal the fire because Terrible is an HE spammer. And um, yeah, load the HE and get going. So Terrible is very, very fast. There's, I have no... I have no um, illusions that I'm going to be able to to uh, run away from a terrible. I just want to dodge his torps as much as possible, and he's shooting widespread. So, and blop him in the side with my uh, with my main guns, and yeah, this is something I can do. <laughs> and uh, since he was the last ship alive, these torpedoes really, really don't matter anymore. <laughs> so, I think you're starting to see what I'm what I mean with um, I'm playing this rather a little bit more aggressively than you would probably otherwise do in a Japanese battleship. <laughs> but you know me, <laughs> it's, it's got good secondaries. What am I going to do? Anyway, um, let's play a second battle. And this time it is a t it is a tier eight game, but there's a fail platoon with the Saipan, who's brought along a New Mexico into, into a Tier 8 game. Oh well, and New Mexico is well armored. And we're playing in Cage. But uh, what else? We got Black Amalfi, Z Z23, Edinburgh, and a bit of other stuff. So let's see what we can, we can get ourselves done. Now obviously, um, the temptation with a Japanese battleship is to, you know, stay outside the capture circle and um, shoot from long range. I don't feel that in the Nagato. Because the guns are not that precise, and while they are large caliber and hitting very, very hard, um, I've got all these secondaries to work with, you know what I mean? <laughs> it would be a shame to let them, not, let them go to waste and not use them. So I'm going to be very much inside the capture circle in this thing. Plus, also, I have a very good torpedo protection, so if, if that German destroyer or the Edinburgh is, is, or the, I think it was a Saipan on the enemy team, is uh, getting funny ideas with torpedoes, I can actually tank them reasonably well because a fifth of the damage just gets uh, reduced every single moment. But for now, we're going to be heading straight into the capture circle. Uh, I don't know where our destroyer is. Oh, our destroyer is going the long way around, is he? Yeah, the Minsk, the Minsk being a gunboat destroyer, is trying to torpedo one of the cruisers over there. Oh well. <laughs> At least the Cleveland goal has the right idea. Okay, first customer, Edinburgh. Um, let's see, at this range, he might be turning out by the time uh, by the time my shells get there. So I don't have high hopes for these actually hitting. Who do I have with me here? Helena, okay, can take that. Uh, someone is aiming at me, but that Amalfi has run himself aground and is now smoking up. Now, he hasn't realized that the Amalfi has a fuel smoke that he can actually take with him. So he's just sitting there. Which means um, I don't really know, need to know where he is. I am taking a little bit of crossfire there, but uh, not uh, not bad armor on the on the Nagato. And uh, yeah, the Amalfi is just uh, yeah he's now he's he's sailing away from his smoke. So uh, yeah, you could have taken that with you. It's generally a good idea to use these kind of things when you're trying to to avoid giving broadside. Because um, if you do, then you get slapped a little bit. Okay, so we've got the cup secured. I've still got someone shooting at me. I want to uh, increase the angles a little bit. But I think it's just a New Mexico over there. I don't have to be super afraid of that thing. Uh, at least not at long range. It's just the torpedoes. Okay, yeah, there come the Amalfi Torps. I might be taking one of them. That's fine. Um, Amalfi Torps uh, uh, didn't, don't hurt all that hard. And 
once again, torpedo damage reduction coming in handy here. We, to nobody's great surprise, we have lost the Minsk, but the Edinburgh has just got a huge slap in the side, and he is now once again turning and giving broadside to me, so let's see if we can get a bit better luck. Okay, I am... Uh, I'm gonna be needed back in the cup, and I want to give some oh, over penetration. Okay, I'm gonna give some cover to the Cleveland because we don't want the Cleveland. Um, oh, Edinburgh is running ground. <laughs> uh, we don't want the Cleveland to be taking point here. We want to do that ourselves. So, I am giving a fair amount of broadside, but the Colorado is sailing around the outside. So it's just the, the Amalfi, uh, Edinburgh, the Z, and the New Mexico. So I'm not afraid of any of these guns. So I can just sit here um, brazenly and uh, just yeah, Amalfi is dead and just get some some shots in at things. Okay, Colorado is sailing around the side though, and I think it's just a Cleveland on our side. So I'm getting ready once we have the capture the circle back to head back out again and um, deal with that Colorado as, he coming, as he's coming around flanking. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna unload under New Mexico while, while we're here. New Mexico is pretty heavily armored, so I mean, this is something you would see generally in a, uh, in a tier seven battle still, and she can definitely hold her own. But uh, once again, I'm not super afraid of the guns, especially that I've just taken out one of her turrets. And he's, she's turning around anyway, so I'm not sure what she's trying to... She's trying to battle whatever other battleship we have over here, giving me just free reign to unload all my secondaries into that ship. Damage cons a single fire. And uh, we've got the main guns as well. But now the Colorado is coming around, endangering our Cleveland and our carrier. So I'm just gonna go around back here. I'm, I mean, I'm full health, I've got two heals left. And I'm gonna start taking, uh, start tanking this, because the belt armor on again the belt armor on the Nagato isn't completely terrible. And if I can hit the Colorado in the deck from here, now this was too low. See, this is hitting the Colorado's belt, and it's just semi pens. Colorado's belt is thicker than mine. But if I can hit the deck armor, Colorado has a very weak deck, so I'm gonna need a, need to aim a little bit higher, kind of like there. Uh, yeah, that's getting better. And yeah, once again, he has underestimated my secondaries. <laughs> And that's one dead color. Okay, done. And I've lost, uh, what was it, like 15, 20,000 points, points of health? That's, I, I can take that. Okay, we're healing a little bit back up. I'm gonna let that fire burn, not for a single fire. It's three on three, we are ahead on points. And Cleveland is being very aggressive here. I mean, he knows that there's a Colorado behind that island, right? And um, there's no reason for you to be this to to, to be this exposed. Uh, we are holding the cup. It's up to them to come to us. But uh, he is going to chase the Z the Z23, and just in case he's not going to be able to deal with him. But yeah, he is going to get uh, going to get crossfired from that battleship over there. So that was uh, that was an un unnecessary sacrifice that he's going to make here in a second, I think. But uh, just in case he's he dies before the yeah he dies uh, actually to the Saipan. Uh, before the uh, Z Z23 is able to uh, be sunk. So I'm gonna have to deal with this thing. And once again, secondaries and main guns. And that is, I can one torp, one torp load, I can take. That's fine, yep. Torpedo defense to the rescue. And he is dead. Which means we are now ahead on points. Our carrier is still alive. I don't know how many hit, I don't know how the carrier is hit point wise, but I am gonna try and sail away now. This is kind of the time when you don't want to brawl anymore because there's a carrier. If it was just a Colorado, I would have I would have been able to deal with it. But it's there's a Saipan. There come the torpedo planes. There's no way I'm going to be able to dodge these. I'm just going to steam full full steam ahead. See if I can dodge. Nah, I'm going to take all four. So uh, we still got 56 seconds. So it's a reasonable amount of time left. But we are holding the capture circle, and the Colorado isn't. It's just reversing along the edge of it. So uh, she's not really doing anything in terms of. Um, endangering me in the cup there and once again Saipan uh, torpedo bombers not much I can do about it I'm just taking it uh, shooting a bunch of them down if I can but uh, I am just trying to not die right now so I'm just sailing away because once again the Colorado is I think finally has realized that having the capture circle under control is actually something that is beneficial to your game it's a little bit late for that we've got 20 seconds left and we're almost 300 points ahead but um, anyway it is what it is so uh, just gonna turn out because there's another bunch of torpedo bombers coming. Now the Colorado is capping, but that's too late, and I don't think I'm gonna get another salvo off at him. I can't even see him right now. I, th I think he's over there somewhere. Yeah, there he is. Uh, yeah, not gonna get another salvo off. That's fine. So yeah, that is the Nagato. Um, I am, to my great surprise, thoroughly enjoying the ship. 
And the reason I'm enjoying this ship is because she is a pretty good brawler. The armor is holding up reasonably well. The, um, the secondaries can dish out a very, very, uh, a very, very pleasant amount of damage. And I mean, it's not a German ship, right? It's not a Gneisenau, now. It's not a Bismarck. But um, you see, I've done 12,000 points of damage with the secondaries. So <laughs> that's not terrible for, <laughs> for a Japanese battleship. Um, I am enjoying this ship, and um, I think I've got actually enough XP to get the Amagi. I'm just not sure if I have any, if I have any more blueprints laying around, because I do want to get the Akizuki as well, so I'm going to have to check that. But yeah, I'm definitely going to keep grinding up towards the Yamato and uh, get Yamamoto onto the ship that he, in all honesty, would have deserved. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye!